This video is brought to you by Brilliant. On Sunday, French President Emmanuel Macron dropped a bombshell and announced that he was dissolving the National Assembly in order to hold snap parliamentary elections on June the 30th and July the 7th. The announcement came soon after the European Parliament election results showed Marine Le Pen's far-right national rally scoring a resounding victory on 31%, while Macron's own alliance was in distant second on less than 15%. Macron described this result as something he couldn't come to terms with, adding that the rise of nationalists, of demagogues, is a danger for our nation, but also for Europe, and declaring that his decision to call a snap election was an act of trust in the French people to make the best choice for themselves and future generations. So in this video, we're going to explain France's parliamentary system and why Macron has taken what appears to be a massive gamble that could end up with Marine Le Pen's protégé, Jordan Bardella as Prime Minister. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. It's first worth pointing out a few important things. For starters, these snap elections are for the National Assembly, so it's not Macron that's up for election, but rather the lower house of the French Parliament. Anyway, France's system is a semi-presidential one. The president, directly elected by the people, is the head of state and wields significant influence over foreign and security policy, while also being able to dissolve the National Assembly and appoint and dismiss the prime minister. But it's the prime minister who is actually the head of government, i.e. the one that leads the cabinet and runs things domestically day to day. However, because the Prime Minister needs the confidence of the National Assembly, it's therefore possible to end up with a Prime Minister and President from opposing political parties. This is known as cohabitation. Since the French Fifth Republic was established in 1958, there have only been three cohabitation periods. During cohabitation, the president is basically pushed to the legislative sidelines, with the exception of some areas of foreign and defence policy, while the prime minister functions as the actual political executive. Macron's alliance lost its parliamentary majority at the 2022 election, but remained the largest group, so has effectively been running a minority government since then. Anyway, given the strength of the national rally vote and his own alliance's weakness at the European election, you might be wondering why on earth Macron has called a snap election. Well, there are a few theories. The first one is what you might call the Pedro Sanchez hypothesis, because Macron may be hoping to emulate the success of the Spanish Prime Minister, who last year, after his Socialist Party suffered major defeats in regional elections, called a snap election and managed, against the odds, to actually stay in power. Despite being far from a perfect parallel, Macron may be following similar thinking to Sanchez, deny the right wing their victory lap, force them straight back into campaign mode, and hope that a public fear of the far right coming to power will coalesce voters around his own alliance, or at least more moderate parties that may be easier to work with. Macron may also be hoping that he can deny Le Pen's national rally a victory due to the nature of France's legislative elections, which are held in two rounds a week apart. Basically, a seat can only be won in the first round if a candidate gets 50% or more. Otherwise, the top two candidates, or any candidate receiving votes equivalent to at least 12.5% of eligible voters, will go through to the runoff. This system makes it difficult for parties considered to be more extreme to win seats in the National Assembly, because while they may have considerable support, it's a tall order from them to win the runoffs, as voters opposed to the far right can unify around a single second round candidate to beat them. The tone of Macron's announcement is clearly setting the groundwork for a campaign focused on highlighting the threat of the far right. But it's a massive gamble. The threat argument has mostly worked so far, but as election results show, National Rally has become increasingly mainstream, and the potency of that kind of attack may be wearing off. Plus, it's clear that Macron's own team were divided on his surprise decision, with Prime Minister Gabriel Attal reportedly urging Macron not to dissolve the National Assembly and to accept his resignation as Prime Minister instead. That takes us to our next hypothesis, that Macron is willing to risk a worst-case scenario of National Rally winning the legislative election, resulting in Jordan Bardella as Prime Minister, as part of a longer-term strategy looking ahead to the 2027 presidential election. 
The logic here is that a couple of years of cohabitation government with National Rally would, Macron may hope, expose the party as inept and incapable of governing, ending the very real prospect of them winning the presidency in 2027. Proponents of this hypothesis can point to the previous eras of cohabitation, as each of these ended up with the incumbent prime minister losing the subsequent presidential election. However, there is obviously no guarantee that letting National Valley into government would have this effect, and cohabitation of this kind would probably make Macron's life pretty miserable over the next few years, and obviously end his ability to influence the domestic agenda. Another factor behind Macron's thinking is that a number of analysts had already been expecting a snap election to be held later this year, likely caused by censure votes against Macron's government over the contentious 2025 budget. So while the upcoming legislative election is being held three years early, Macron may, in a sense, only be bringing forward an inevitable snap election by a few months. Nevertheless, it seems like no one had expected a snap election to be called so soon, especially before the Paris Olympics. Macron may have chosen to go early in the hopes of creating a sense of urgency to drive up turnout. He's also likely hoping to catch his opponents off guard, particularly left-wing parties who, despite having successfully united ahead of the legislative election in 2022, are currently deeply divided and only have a matter of days to work out some kind of alliance if they want to put on another united front, though the parties have announced their joint intention to do so. If they are successful, it could see Macron's alliance squeezed between a united left on one side and on the other a resurgent national rally, which may well seek its own alliance with others, including the smaller far-right Reconquest Party. As an indicator of the current state of play, the first poll since the dissolution shows a hung parliament, with major gains but no majority for national rally, while Macron's alliance would see considerable losses. A result like this would likely cause even more governmental deadlock, but we'll ultimately have to wait and see what happens. The one thing we can be certain of though, because of the rapid election timetable, is that we won't have to wait long to find out. Now, understanding exactly what has or is going to happen here can be a little tricky, requiring you to evaluate lots of information from different, often partial, sources. It would be sensible then to begin improving your critical thinking skills so that you can keep sharp and better understand what's going on. And well, our sponsor Brilliant.org can help you do just that. Brilliant is the online learning platform that's designed specifically to teach you everything from maths, data analysis, programming and AI from the ground up. You don't need a fancy degree or to have dedicated hundreds of hours to studying any of these. All you need is a device with an internet connection and a few spare minutes a day. And with your spare few minutes, you'll learn by actually doing, with Brilliant providing hands-on lessons that let you play around with concepts, a method that has been shown to be six times more effective than just watching lectures. What makes this even better is that this content is created by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers and professionals from MIT, Caltech, Duke, Microsoft and more. You can try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days. Just click on the link in the description. That way you'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription.